Active shooter drills have become mainstays in American schools, but how they look and what students involved experience vary from school to school, district to district, and state to state. But if one Washington lawmaker had her way, there would be no active shooter drills in schools anymore. Good morning, Capitol. I'm Jimmy Nguyen. Today, we take a deep dive into the bill of Washington legislature that made fundamentally change how the active shooter drills look, and we sit down with the lawmaker who wrote the bill. Here's Oscar Pekan. Recently, a bill was proposed and sponsored that would reform the policy and procedure for active shooter drills in Washington schools. The bill was proposed by State Representative Amy Whalen from Kirkland, and we spoke with her and asked her what changes the passing of the bill would bring to schools in the state. It would ensure that active shooter drills, if they're conducted, are conducted in an age-appropriate and uh, trauma-trained way. So they would be, um, right now, they are permitted without much regulation. So they would, there would be some requirements or guardrails around how we conduct active shooter drills in schools. She says that active shooter drills are associated with increases in depression, anxiety, and fears about death among children as young as five years old to high schoolers, their parents, and teachers. She also says that the realistic recreation of active shooter scenarios is the main cause for this. Well, I, my ultimate, um, you know, what I'd ultimately like to see is that we don't do active shooter drills, that we do drills to prepare kids for all kinds of emergencies, but not specifically active shooter drills. Ar you know, armed intruder, active shooter, those kinds of things. I, I understand that those exist and we need to be prepared for all kinds of things, but mimicking actual gunfire, I don't think we need to be doing to kids. Mm -hmm. um, as a student at a high school, I've never experienced, you know, a uh, uh, recreation of actual gunfire in an active shooter drill. Do you know where that might have occurred? Oh, I think it happens around the state and it certainly happens around the country. Mm -hmm. okay. I actually just spoke to a senator and she said that her elementary school kid ha had gone through one. And that was in Redmond. Mm -hmm. Finally, we asked how she believes that the passing of this bill would make Washington schools safer. Uh, I don't think, well, I don't think that they necessarily make schools a less safe or safer environment. What they do is protect kids' behavioral health and to, to have um, kids be have less anxiety and less stress in their lives is a good thing, especially after the everything that, you know, your generation has been through during the um, pandemic. I just think everything that we can do to make school feel like a safe and welcoming place and where kids feel safe to be themselves and learn and have fun, that's what we want to do. So that's what I hope is that the, that the bill will make kids feel more safe. Friday, the bill went to the Washington State Senate Education Committee for review and continues to move forward quickly with much support. Reporting for Kook TV, I'm Oscar Bacon. We will keep everyone updated on the bill as it either dies in the committee or makes its way to the full legislature. Now, turning to the rest of the he day's headlines. We learned late Friday that Capitol High School has a new administrator. Ms. Lil Hunter is joining the administration for the remainder of the school year as the assistant principal. Lil has been principal in various school districts and most recently served in the Tacoma City Council. She begins sharing her roles and responsibility with the administration today. We look forward to getting to know her in a future interview on QTV. And now, here is Riley with What's Good to Know. The ASVAB Career Exploration Test will be given at CHS on March 8th at 9 a.m. in the College of Career Readiness Center. Register for the ASVAB in your Naviance student account or stop by the CCRC for, for assistance. And in other news, there will be a homework club starting March 7th every Monday from 3.30 to 4.30. If you need more time or need some help on your homework, come on down and join us in the club. Contact pshrek at thirstintogether.org for more info. Also, today in third period, there will be a shelter-in-place drill. Shelter-in-place is typically used when authorities are engaged in an operation nearby, outside of the school, or when a local or national disaster has been declared. The goal is to keep students and staff safe and indoors. During a shelter-in-place, staff and students are instructed to stay inside their classrooms and may continue learning as normal unless di otherwise directed. The intercom will let you know when the drill is starting, so keep your ears open. Next, lunch today is nachos with taco meat, refried beans, and your choice of fresh fruit. And one more note to add about lunch. The Capitol High School administration would like to remind all students to eat in only areas that are supervised during lunch. Those areas include the commons, the exterior deck off the commons, and the hallway with the compass. Finally, as we round this Black History Month, we want to acknowledge some of America's heroes who don't get the credit that they deserve. Isabella Solomon reports. When people think of Black History Month, they think of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Maya Angelou, and Rosa Parks but those are just a few of the most recognizable names. Today, we want to recognize people of color whose accomplishments you may not know about.
first on our list, we begin with Claudette Colvin, who was a pioneer of the 1950s civil rights movement. She was arrested for not giving up her seat on the bus to a white woman. Sound familiar? She, in fact, did it months before Rosa Parks. Another incredible woman, Alice Coachman, made history in the 1948 Olympics for leaping a record-breaking height of over 5 feet 6 inches in the high jump. She became the first black woman to earn a gold medal. And finally, we remind you about Shirley Chisholm, an amazing individual we told you about during MLK Week. She was the first African-American woman elected into the U.S. State Congress. Black History Month isn't just about the most well-known individuals, but about every accomplishment made by the members of the black community. Celebrating shows your support for the accomplishments of these individuals and the work they have done to heal the wounds and right the wrongs of the past. Reporting for Kook TV, I'm Isabella Solomon. Well, that's all for today's broadcast. Make it a good morning, Capital. Thank you for watching Kook TV. Next, the Pledge of Allegiance. You may now stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.